14. septembra 2007. godine rektor Megatrin Univerziteta, profesor dr. Miće Evanović, zvanično je posetio Institut za visoki diplomatski studije Pedro Gual i tom prilikom vodio razgovore sa direktorom ove ugledne naučne institucije, profesorom Johnnyem Balsom, generalnim sekretarom Marijom Eugenijom Karaskjel i ostalim profesorima i članovima rukovodstva ove akademije. Glavna tema razgovora bila je saradnja između Venezuelanske diplomatske akademije i Megatrend univerziteta, pri čemu je izražen visok stepen interesovanja prema aktualnim događajima na Balkanu i posebno pitanjima suvereniteta i teritorijalnog integriteta država u ovom delu Evrope. Posebna pažnja date je razmeni publikacija, profesora, zajedničkom organizovanju seminara i međunarodnih konferencija, kao i mogućnosti da mlade venecuelanske diplomate obave posle diplomsko usavršavanje na našem univerzitetu. Tokom ovog susreta, rektor Megatrend univerziteta je takođe informisan o zastoju u pregovorima između venecuelanske i naše diplomatske akademije zbog raspada državne zajednice Srbije i Crne Gore. U sklopu zvanične posete Institutu za visoke diplomatske studije Pedro Gual, profesor dr. Miće Jovanović je studentima akademije, predstavnicima Ministarstva inostranih poslova i univerziteta ove zemlje, održao predavanje na temu raspada bivše Jugoslavije, balkanske krize i aktualnog položaja Balkana u međunarodnim odnosima. Friends, citizens, I'm very happy that I'm here with you today and I would like... Uh express uh, uh, my uh, special uh, appreciation that you came here in this number. Even if it's not uh, very much of uh, audience, but I'm quite sure that we have here all the experts in the field, uh, in the field uh, about which I'm going to talk today. So my lecture uh, uh, is uh, divided in four parts. The first one, uh, it will be the um, uh, the topic will be self-management in Yugoslavia, uh, former Yugoslavia, and now uh, how it uh, influenced uh, economy and uh, society in Serbia nowadays. In this part of my lecture, you will find out that uh, what is now happening here in Venezuela is very, very similar which uh, we had for more than 40 years in former Yugoslavia and Serbia. The second part of my lecture will be linked uh, to some topic which I'm sure uh, is very interesting for you and for us as well, because uh, it will uh, tell you about globalization and the way in which globalization is going to mondialism. And I'm sure that according to uh, the line of, in which your president now is leading uh, your country, uh, we will clearly show up that globalization at least is a, a killer of the culture. In the third part of my lecturing, we will see how globalization impacts Serbia with a special view to Kosovo province of Serbia. And then I will try to explain you how globalization and uh, imperialism um, made a big trouble to Serbian people bombing us in 1999. And finally, uh, the fourth part will uh, be some short comment about how we see the revolution in Venezuela. So let me start uh, with uh, a history of socialism in former Yugoslavia. As you probably know, after the Second World War, we started immediately to develop uh, some kind of socialism, which uh, was not similar to any kind known uh, until that time. So in the first five years, uh, between 1945 and 1950, we had so-called etatism, in which the state has crucial role in society, in economy, cultural development, in everything. Then, uh, in 1950, President Tito decided to give all the power to the people. And then, on 27th of June, 1950, in uh, Yugoslavian Assembly, 
they were adopted a new law with the name law about the transfer of the enterprises from state ownership to the ownership of working collectives. So what is the crucial points of this law? The first one, that the state ownership became social ownership. According to the great tradition of that time in Yugoslavia, Edward Carvey, the definition of social ownership is that this is the ownership which is everyone's and no one's. It, uh, it means that uh, everyone in former Yugoslavia from that moment could um, run the ownership. In the name of all the workers, uh, uh, so-called new formed workers' councils are representing all the interests of working class. And to make it a bit shorter, it was working quite well since uh, from 1950 up to 1957, uh, the economic growth of uh, Yugoslavia was uh, the biggest in Europe with 7.2% uh, per year. Then in 1963, we can say that self-management uh, got completely in practice when in 1963 new constitution was adopted in um, Yugoslavian assembly in which was clearly stated that self-management now is working not only in the field of economy but of, uh, in the field of uh, uh, social, culture, sport and everywhere as well. And from this moment, we had uh, even faster economic growth, uh, which was uh, definitely, I think, the biggest in 1974. Uh, introduced some new economic law with the name Associated Labor Act. Uh, this was, uh, uh, I think, the best golden period of socialism in Yugoslavia. Uh, because uh, uh, all the decisions were given to the workers in uh, three modules. The first one, on the level of workshop, was uh, in, uh, within the organization which was called Basic organization of associated labor. Then the second module, the second uh, organizational module was established on the middle level of companies. Mm -hmm. And the third one was a um, yeah. complex organization of associated labor, which was built up of the previous organizational modules. And it was working on the level of overall organization. Now, uh, I would like to tell you what happened after that. It was working perfectly well until 1989, uh, when the late President Slobodan Milosevic, who died in Hague uh, last year, but we cannot judge today was uh, he uh, good or bad, but the fact is that he was the first president in Central or Southeast Europe, or the president of former socialist countries, who introduced some kind of market economy in former socialist uh, society. And he suspended the uh, Associated Labor Act, uh, simply the Company Act. And the main principles of this Company Act were that we have to meet the requirement of market economy uh, with a view to the economies uh, we already uh, uh, know about them from European Union or from the United States or everywhere from the capitalistic world. And the first very bad consequence of 
this decision that in former Yugoslavia, economic development in different uh, federal republics started to go unjustified. So some of federal republics went much faster up, in like Donbass. Slovenia, for instance, and Croatia, and Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Montenegro, they were developing slower. Uh, the terrible consequence of this were the first conflicts on the territory of former Yugoslavia, because uh, some of the federal republics wanted to separate from Yugoslavia and to run their own uh, society and their own community, their own economy. And then the worst coincidence was that at the same time Berlin Wall was destroyed and at that time the globalization in the world in Europe started. So with this terrible situation in Yugoslavia and with the globalization where the United States supported strongly all the federal republics wanted to separate, we faced terrible, bloody civil war. And this was the first impact of globalization to Yugoslavia, to Europe, to Serbia. And as you probably know, I'm sure that you know this, only one year after that, the Red Star went down from Kremlin and then, at that moment, the world became unipolar. Uh, this situation in the world, in Europe, supporting even more the separation tendencies of uh, federal republics uh, of former Yugoslavia, and then, uh, uh, let's call it uh, the divorce, or the splitting up of former Yugoslavia, after the bloody war in which more than 300,000 people were killed. Now we can see that the globalization is going very fast, but let me just try to explain only in a few words what is globalization. If the globalization is defined as a movement, global movement, in which all 200 and something countries in the world will share uh, economic wealth and if globalization make that all the countries in the world would be well balanced in economy and if the globalization could make all the people in the world to be happy, we could accept it. But if globalization understands that one power should rule the whole planet, it's terrible. And it seems to me that globalization is going exactly in this way. I have to tell you that not only socialist countries and progressive countries in the world are doing this now. For instance, in France, we can say that uh, they have so-called movement of resistance to the globalization or to mondialism. And uh, above, uh, above all the people in France, the students of almost all French universities are fighting against globalization or mondialism. But why I said that uh, globalization is a killer of culture? For instance, here in Venezuela, and for instance, we in Serbia, we have a long, long history. We have our roots, we have our uh, tradition, we have our language, we have uh, our um, culture, as I said, our painters, sculptures. You have a long, 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 long history back in the past, as Italy, France, Germany, but with the concept of mondialism, the United States would like 
to impose only one culture, but we cannot call this culture. This is subculture. Of course, all of us, we like uh, jeans, Levi's. We like uh, hamburgers from McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I personally adore rock and roll, mm -hmm. but yes, one colleague as well. Yes, but let's play later. <laughs> But this is not the culture which could conquer all the world. We are agree about globalization in the way I explained uh, uh, 10 minutes ago. And it is possible to uh, make uh, the world to be one global village, but in a way in which all the cultures, all the people, all the traditions, all the roots will would be respected by the others. Let me now come to the point of, uh, to continue about, uh, about the topic how globalization uh, is still impacting Serbia with a view to Serbian South Province Kosovo. You know that we were trying to protect Kosovo in 1999 when the Albanian uh, minority supported by NATO, supported by the United States, uh, was trying to separate from Serbia. Needless to say that all our churches, all our culture, everything which is uh, which are the roots of Serbia uh, are coming from Kosovo. And how it could be possible to leave 15% of our territory to the foreign country. I would like to ask the United States government, would they be ready to give to Mexico, uh, South California? Yes. I am sure that they would not like this. Yes. So in this case, we could talk about two standards. What is possible for uh, Serbia is absolutely impossible for the United States okay, in the concrete yeah. case. But I would like to put the question to the governors of the European Union. If they permit this, what are they going to do with Basquiat, with Ireland, with some of Russian republics who wish to separate as well? because Kosovo could be unprecedented for all these countries to ask for separation in the future. At the very end, uh, I would like to make some comment because uh, what we uh, can see here in Venezuela is that uh, President Chavez is one of the most prominent fighters against mondialism. The only thing is he must be strong, he must protect himself, and he must engage all the nation, young people, experts, and I'm quite sure that with this concept you will have, uh, you will see the happiness of uh, socialism, one modern concept of socialism which uh, will uh, put out Venezuela uh, above all from the economic travels. And I'm quite sure that uh, many, many countries from South, or better to say Latin America, will be following him in the future. So maybe, yes. and this will be the way in which the revolution will win. Thank you very much for your attention and excellent, excellent participation and debate and questions. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias.